Pokemon programmers, there's one more issue we need to deal with in Catch 'em All. Now, you might not encounter this, but I'm showing this example to you in the simulator just in case. Now, you can see my simulator is telling me that I'm showing 1130 Pokemon of a total of what? 1050 possible Pokemon? No, I don't have a Pokemon clone machine. What happened here is that I scrolled in the simulator so quickly that the code in cell for Roat made a second call to get data with the same URL before the results of the first one were returned. And if that happens, that would mean that you've got two calls to get data that were placed in the same URL. That leads to duplicate data. And if I scroll up here, I can see that I've got Zygrade 10 and Zygrade 50. Those are easy to spot. And if I scroll up a little bit more, I can see I've got another Zygrade 10 and a Zygrade 50. Now, I put this print statement in my self for row at code to show you the index path that my code is calling, as well as the creature array count before making the get data call. And you can see here, for example, that I'm making two calls and they have the same creature array count. And these lines with the webs in front of them show that the get data is making two calls to the same page. So that's how we get unwanted repeat data in our app. How do we avoid it? Well, Apple has a more sophisticated technique for prefetching data, but since this is an intro course just one semester long, we're going to show you a simpler technique that's likely easier for you to understand at this point in your iOS career. Prefetching data can get some smoother scrolling, but I'm cutting a corner here because I want to cover full stack work in our next app. And if I introduce prefetching now, it'll take more time and it'll limit what we can cover in a single semester. So here's a technique that's simple and effective. In order to prevent multiple calls, to get the same data, we're just going to add a flag to our code that says we're fetching data. Now we'll start with this flag set to false and we'll set it to true as soon as we start to fetch the next page of JSON data. And we'll set it to false again when we get that page of JSON data. Now also, each time before we fetch our data, we'll make sure that the flag isn't true. So that'd mean we're already fetching that page and we don't want to double fetch that data. And if that's not clear now, we'll code it up and hopefully that'll clear things up. So to do this, let's head over to creatures.swift. I also commented out this print line that's just below decoding the JSON data. Our JSON data is being decoded fine, so we no longer need to have this print statement. And that'll make sure that our console isn't that cluttered. So now I'm going to scroll up to the top. I'm going to add an is fetching property to the class, and I'm going to set it to false. So that's going to be a bool. Then right here in get data, I'll use a guard statement to kick me out of get data if I'm already in the process of fetching data. Now that'll be the case if is fetching is true. So we'll simply say guard exclamation point is fetching. That means if it's not fetching or is fetching is false, then we can continue and the guard will let us pass. But if not, we'll say else, open and close curlies, return. And why don't we add a comment here to remind us what this does. Do not get data if you're already fetching data. This avoids a double fetch. Now, if the guard bouncer lets us through, we'll set is fetching equal to true. Then we need just one more line. We'll set is fetching back to false once we've got our data. So we'll do that just before the completed statement here. So just above completed, we'll say is fetching equals false. And oops, I'm in a closure. So Xcode is reminding me that I've got to put a self in front of is fetching here. Now let's build and run. And just to make sure that things are working, I'm going to go ahead and build and run on a simulator that I haven't worked on previously. So I'm going to select iPhone 12 Pro Max. And now I can build and run. And I'm doing this just in case there was any data that was cached in the earlier simulator. I'm actually not sure if the data is even cached, but I've noticed in subsequent runs that it seems to be a bit faster. So I'm hopeful that this will be a good way to make sure that everything is working fine. There's no caching. So let's build and run. And here we go. I'm going to scroll like a madman. Scrollity scroll, scroll. Keep on scrolling with a little bit of scroll on the side. And we can see, finally, we get all the way to the end. And I have no duplicate data at all in my app. So we can see up top, we've got 1050 Pokemon of 1050 Pokemon, just as many as we expect. And we haven't double loaded any by scrolling so quickly. Nice. Now I noticed one more thing that we should address. If you click on some of the Pokemon toward the end, you'll see that you get an error in the console. Now this happens if I click on my very last Pokemon, the Necrozma Ultra. Now the app won't crash, it handles the error gracefully, but the app reports a JSON error. And we also don't see any data for this Pokemon. So what gives? Let's take a look. So I'm going to highlight the last URL that shows in my console. This was actually printed by CreatureDetail.Swift when it accessed the detail data for this Pokemon. And with this copy, I'm going to head to the browser and paste in the URL. And I see the data for Necrozma Ultra. 
and I can collapse some of the expanded data that we see here. And I'm gonna look for the JSON keys that we're using, and ah, here is the problem. Now we get data from the front underscore default key. That's got the URL for our image, and we've defined that as a string in our creature detail class. But some of these Pokemon, especially the ones toward the end, don't have any images. And we can see in this case, there's no image here, and it's not returning an empty string for font underscore default, it's returning a null, which Swift interprets as a nil, which means we have to change our type for font underscore default from string to string question mark to handle the optional case if we might get a nil. So let's head back to Xcode. We'll go to creature detail .swift. We'll change the data type for our font underscore default variable by adding a question mark to the end of string. Now we won't get an error when we perform that JSON decoding because our class property can now handle a string or a nil in this property. So if we try to build and run, we'll get one more error down here in the do catch clause after decoding the JSON. We need to deal with the fact that font underscore default is now an optional and it might give us a nil, but image URL expects a string in all cases. So what we'll do is we'll use nil coalescing on this statement that gave us an error. We'll just add question mark, question mark to the end of it, and we'll follow that by an empty string. So if we do get a nil in font underscore default, what we'll do is we'll pass in an empty string, which counts as a string. URL string can accept that, and this should completely prevent the error that we were just seeing. And now just to double check our earlier fix, I'll scroll, scroll, scroll all the way to the bottom. And again, we're not getting any repeated JSON. That looks good. 1,050 of 1,050 Pokemon. And when we click on our last Pokemon, we don't see any JSON error in the console. And even even though we don't see any image for this Pokemon, we didn't expect one because this Pokemon doesn't have an image in its JSON data, but we now do get the height and weight for this Pokemon because we didn't get that JSON decoding error and we were able to decode the rest of the JSON. Now you could do some additional refactoring in this app. You could turn the activity indicator into a view controller extension. You could refactor your load data code and list view controller .swift. I'll leave those things for you to try on your own if you'd like, but at this point, we can consider that another app is done. So congratulations, Pokemon programmer. You caught them all. Keep at it.